Welcome to Lunch and Learn. I'm Cynthia Martin. And I'm Patsy Shreve, and we're going to be your hosts today. Today, our topic is footholds, strongholds, and the strong man. And our hope is that we can shed some light on these areas and explain what they are and how they link and work together. Um, have you ever heard the, the saying, um, I, if I could just get my foot in the door, or if I give them an inch, they'll take a mile? Well, Satan works along those lines, too. Um, he, he tries to get his foot in the door so he can take more and more and more ground in our life. Um, it's important that we completely eradicate him, though, and his influences from our life. Um, a door or a gate or a foothold is an entry point, um, which Satan works to obtain a claim, um, work to attach to or oppress someone. So it's his way of, of um, having some influence in a person's life. A foothold is ground within a person's life and that it's um, in some way kind of like where we have surrendered to evil in a certain way. That's right. And we want to talk about, I'm going to do a little kind of a, a Cynthia version, which I do quite often, uh, of Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Scripture tells us in those verses um, to not let the sun go down while you're angry, right? And not to give the devil a foothold. Well, that really kind of piqued my interest because my history includes a huge stronghold and some serious problems in the area of anger. So when I got looking at that and started doing some study, um, I realized or, or actually went into the word foothold and the word foothold uh, comes from the Greek and it's topos means a place. Topos carries the core meaning of an inhabited or an occupied place or location. So we get our English word topography, which is the study of the land or maps. We make maps from the topog topography. If you, sometimes if you'll go in and do a search to get uh, look in an area. My husband does it all the time because he likes to look at elevations and all that kind of stuff. And a top a topography map will show you that. It'll show you, and it'll also um, it's it, it it's a connotation of some that you can say that this is a place and it has a boundary and there are um, it's usually occupied by something. So we will use that scripture that term foothold. Um, when we're talking about that verse, don't give the devil a foothold, it conveys kind of like the implication of giving an opportunity. Paul, who is the writer of Ephesians, is saying that if someone hangs on to anger, as I said, I can use that example myself very well, um, if they, rather than confessing it and renouncing it, we give a spiritual, we give spiritual ground. Sometimes people will say they opened a door, they opened a gate. We use that terminology. Mm -hmm. But it's like we give spiritual ground to be occupied and to be manipulated for evil purposes. So anger is not the only way or the only avenue in which the enemy works. But this is a good illustration because I can use practical experience and use my own life as an example. However, um, th this because anger isn't the only thing, but this scripture works really well to explain what a foothold is. See, we make sure that there are no doorways or gates or anything open so the enemy can establish a foothold in our life. Jesus said in um, John 14, 30 and through 31, now I'm going to actually read the scripture here. I will not say much more to you for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that my, the Lord, excuse me, so he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father co has commanded me. So Jesus uses this language, it's kind of legal rights, really, when he states that Satan has no hold on him. See, a foothold, someone, the enemy does have a foothold in our life, but when he has no legal claim, he has no foothold, he has no gateway he has no entry he has no open door into our life um jesus goes says i will not speak with you much longer for the prince of this world is coming he's talking about satan himself or his demonic hordes and he has no hold on me see jesus is our example right so jesus is saying he doesn't got nothing on me but the world must learn that i love the father and that i do exactly what my father has commanded me and so by obedience Jesus stayed completely free of demonic entities being able to access him and control him. Yeah, so 
through complete and absolute obedience, we can also, we can also close the door to the enemy in our life, mm-hmm. but it has to be absolute and complete obedience. Um, and this is really of profound importance for our understanding of the cross and what Jesus sacrificed on the cross. Um, because of his death, um, he has something over which Satan could claim no rights in terms of being a lawful penalty. So in other words, right. he couldn't be penalized penalized lawfully that way because Jesus never sinned. He never had any sin. So now Satan has no legal claim. Mm -hmm. Um, The death of Jesus was an innocent sacrifice on behalf of others. It's not a penalty that was enacted against Jesus by Satan. So if Christ had surrendered ground to Satan, the whole story would have changed tremendously. His death would have been just a punishment for sin or a just punishment for sin, Mm -hmm. but instead it had an effect. It was an effective offering on behalf of the entire world for the sins of the entire world. Exactly, Patsy, because Jesus was sinless Mm -hmm. because he obeyed the father explicitly. There was no place in which the enemy could get a foothold. He didn't hold on to anger. He didn't hold Mm -hmm. on to unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now, don't, you know, you can't convince me that Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't have any situations in which he would have maybe gotten his feelings hurt. Let's think about Mm -hmm. Judas. Mm -hmm. Did that not, you think that wouldn't have hurt Jesus? He loved Mm -hmm. Judas and he didn't want Judas to do the things that he did. But Jesus, we can't control what people do to us or the situations in which we get ourselves into sometimes, but we can control our reactions and we Mm -hmm. can control how we handle those things. And so Jesus handled those things correctly. And so he had, there was no place for the enemy to gain a foothold. So closing doorways includes repentance by the person um, for, in my case, it was for me, for any words or deeds by which um, I gave permission to Satan to claim rights over my life. So if you've done something or opened a door, then you have to repent, right? I would say the good news is we can repent. Let's just make it easy. Let's not stumble around. We can repent and we can also obtain healing. But this entails a truth encounter whereby any evil lies or deceptions that we have believed or which a person has submitted to are confessed and renounced. Yes. So we're going to start talking by what is a foothold? Mm -hmm. Um, We have to divine it. And so as Cynthia explained before, our working definition of a foothold is an inhabited or an occupied place. Well, a foothold is like a place in our life where the enemy can have a hold or a legal claim because we've given him that access. We've surrendered to him. Mm -hmm. A foothold can also um, consist of a wound in our heart. Um, If, if, for an example, if someone is plagued by fears all their life, it could have been a result of because they were assaulted or they experienced some kind of trauma or terrifying experience in their life. And so those fears have a legal right to to torment them because because of that experience that they had, because that wound hasn't been healed yet, that hasn't been taken care of. We also need to note that trauma is defined by the individual. Um, what may be traumatic to me is not traumatic to somebody else. Or so what true. may seem, seem a traumatic experience or something that's so big in somebody else's life may seem minimal to me. Um, so we always have to remember that um, the only place that we can find true healing is through the cross. We can only receive that true and complete freedom and healing through the cross of Jesus. Now, new age practitioners, we know, appear to give relief and healing through their ways of doing things, through their, what we call arts or whatever. But um, true healing and true freedom is only found through Jesus. He is the only way that we can be truly free. That's right. And so we're going to move on to our next topic, which uh, today we, we said that we're going to talk about footholds, strongholds, and the strong man. So our next portion is talking about, we're going to talk about or define what a stronghold is. So the term stronghold appears at least 50 times in the Bible. It's commonly for, referred to as a fortress with, a dif, with difficult access. So, you know, as women, we think of a castle, right? Mm-hmm. Something that's walled in, something that would be really difficult for someone outside force to be able to get into. And so 
um, when King David first saw the city of Jerusalem, it was old, it was ancient, cheerless fortress, and it was inhabited by enemies. No wonder it was twice called a stronghold. So we get the term stronghold from that, from that uh, picture, really. And um, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul uses the term to describe our mindset or our attitude. We begin to believe things and we'll talk about this in, a, in another program out of one of our woundings or our experiences. And we set up something that because of that, we have a foothold and then the enemy will establish a stronghold in our mind. And it's protected because we believe it to be true. See Peter Wagner, I don't know if you know who he is. He passed away here a few years ago. Um, defined a stronghold as a stronghold is a mind impregnated with hopelessness that causes the believer to accept an untangible something that he knows is contrary to the will of God. So we get these beliefs in our, going in our mind that are really um, opposite of his, uh, his character, his nature, and his word, but we believe them to be true. And so that doesn't make them true because we believe them to be true, but we act in a way that because of we believe it to be true, we, we act out in that way. So Francis Frangipan, which is an interesting guy, I have a few of his books, I've actually um, seen him in person a few times, describes them as a spiritual fortress and within which Satan and his legions hide and are protected. These fortresses exist in the thought patterns and the ideas that govern individuals, churches, communities, and nations. And before victory can be claimed, these strongholds must be pulled down. Wow, is that an interesting thought mm -hmm. that we can have stronghold in our churches? Mm -hmm. Patsy, have you found that to be true? I know I have. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, I know they're true in our nation and I know they're true in our communities and they are true in our, in our own personal lives. We just believe things that are not true. Mm -hmm. And until we can confront those and the enemy protects those because he does not want us to get to, to, to truth, right? He's a liar and a deceiver. So how do we know what a stronghold, what stronghold or what spirits or what footholds are operating in our life? See, we can tell by the fruit in someone's life. Mm -hmm. um, people say, well, I'm not a fruit, in, I'm not a fruit, um, what do they call them? Not a fruit inspector, I guess, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not required to pick your fruit. No, you're not. But we can see when we look into someone else's life, the fruit, and we can really determine the things that are going on. For instance, um, Many, many years ago, when I had that huge anger issue, uh, someone very close to me said, you're just an angry person. And that would make me so mad. You know, you'd think about it, but I would think, they don't, I'm, I'm not angry, I'm hurt. But anger comes out, uh, came, my anger came out of the hurt, right? A denied, unmet, unmet need. And um, it made me angry that they said I was angry. I couldn't see my anger because I was angry at what they did and because of the wounds. And so the enemy will set up these beliefs that I'm not angry, I'm just hurt. And mm -hmm. he protects those so that we can keep those, he can keep that lie there. And my, you know, which we'll go into, I'm sure we'll do a program on in anger, but my issue was, is nobody wanted to know why. And so as Christians, we can see the fruit, but we don't need to just, pick on people's fruit. We need to go back to the root, find That's out right. what's causing that so that they can display different fruit. So a general rule to follow is, is um, our issues start with a foothold that become a stronghold that becomes bondage in a person's life. And we have these strongholds primarily in our minds. However, they can ex ex exist in our hearts or really our emotions. And which was the case in my mind or in my life, it started out as a hurt in my emotions as from unmet needs and some things that were done. And then it moved into a mind stronghold. I had a double portion. I had it going in my mind and I had it going in my heart. So I had mind issues that need to be changed. And I had wounds that need to be to meet that need to be healed. And that led me from a foothold to a stronghold. And then Patsy will talk about the strong man. Right. So you can see the progression here. It gets gradually worse and worse and worse. So it all starts with just a foothold. The enemy just has him. And like we said before, you give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. He's going to take as much territory and as much in, and have as much influence as he can possibly have. He All he wants is influence in your life one way or another. And he doesn't play fair. He right. will take it any way he can. So what is the strong man? Um, the Bible tells us, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods 
except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. That's Matthew 12, 29. So we have to bind the strong man first. Well, who is the strong man? In Strong's Concordance, um, the, it's a Greek word called is sorry, is kosros, is kosros, eros, is kosros. There we so go. So glad, Pat, you have problems with that because I always think it's just me. <laughs> I'm not a Greek scholar, that's for sure. <laughs> and so this literally means um, boisterous, forcefully, or forcible. Um, mighty or mightier, powerful, stronger, a stronger man, or valent. Um, Jesus referred to this as a demonic presence, and he called it the strong man. Mm -hmm. And so who is the strong man, and what's his name, and what does he do? Mm -hmm. Well, when we can answer these questions, then we can pinpoint who he is and what is influencing us, and then we can bind him in the name of Jesus, so that he doesn't have that access and that influence in our life. But we have to be able to identify who those strong men or the strong man, the leader of the demonic is. Um, we can lose the power of God to fill our lives and to repair all the damage that he's done. Um, the strong man is usually the root of the issues. So he's the one that that is in charge, basically. He's the He's leader. He's the protector. Yeah, He's he the protector, mm -hmm. right. And so everybody else is under him. Any other demonic influences what, or what we can refer to as fruit of that stronghold and that strong man um, is related to him. And so when we sever that main root um, and we cut off that main root the, or the, what we call a strong man, then we're actually deactivating his influence in our life. Right. And then we are dealing a mortal blow, so to speak, mm -hmm. to this enemy. And all the troops under him yeah. have to surrender too yeah. because they are all under his command and under his leadership. So it's the same principle like in um, the military where you have a general or an officer in charge of troops. Well, if in war, if that officer or that general surrenders to the enemy, well, then everyone else under him has to surrender also. All of his troops must follow. And so we look, see that same principle with the strong man and the demonic um, influences, demonic dem demons that follow him. Once we can get to that root, to the strong man, then all the others have to follow suit. And in review, we would like to um, kind of just go over what we just said. So because Jesus was sinless, he obeyed the Father explicitly, mm -hmm. right? There was no place in which the enemy could get a foothold and therefore create a stronghold. Therefore, there was no place for a strong man to hang out. He didn't have anything to protect or be mm -hmm. leader over. Mm -hmm. And finally, there was, a, there was no stronghold for him to preside over. So... Um, we defined a foothold as a place in our life the enemy has a hold or a legal claim. Sometimes we'll call it a gate or open door in which the enemy has now, because we've left that door open or that gate open, the enemy has come in and gotten a foothold. He's gotten a legal claim or a hold on our life. It might not be big, but he's mm -hmm. got a hold. He's got his foot in the door, right? We get right. your foot in the door like we started at the beginning, or we've given him that inch. It's a place that we've surrendered to him, a place that we've left open. And we define the stronghold as a spiritual fortress within um, which Satan or the demonic, his legions hide and, and are protected. Mm -hmm. These fortresses exist in our thought patterns, in our ideas, and in the wounded areas of our heart or our emotions. And we define the strong man as the principal demonic force, the leader that keeps that person bound. An example would be if a person encounters a situation in which they're angry about, me, they leave that anger overnight and they let it fester. And this allows the enemy to establish a foothold. And then once the foothold has been established and I don't continue or I didn't, or someone doesn't continue, they continually don't deal with that. It becomes a stronghold because that festering keeps continuing and the enemy and the demonic hordes don't mind throwing a little log on the fire. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a place in which the enemy, um, starts to begin to direct the person's life through anger and now it's a stronghold 
And the strong man then is the one who comes in and makes sure that the stronghold is protected and so that they, they now have a place to reside and preside and act and rule over. So when claiming spiritual freedom, it's necessary to identify, close all the doors and the gates, whatever wording you want to use, remove all of the footholds, remove any stronghold, replace any lies with the truth, and bind the strong man and kick him out of your life or out of the life of someone else. That's right. So that is the good news. The good news is that we can <laughs> repent, That's right. That's right. that we can renounce and break any agreements with the enemy, and that we can tell every demonic force to go in the name of Jesus. We have that authority. It's been given to us by Jesus. We have to understand our authority, that we have authority over the enemy. Ezekiel eleven nineteen tells us that he will give us one heart so that mm. we're no longer divided. Such a and, Oh, I love it. And mm -hmm. I will put a new spirit within you and he will take our stony heart out and will give us a heart of flesh. We are thankful and that we rejoice that he can make us new, a new creation. Absolutely. That's How what exciting. he does. That's right. So we're almost out of time. And so our prayer for you today is that any footholds or strongholds that may be operating in your life, that the Lord, you'll ask the Lord and the Lord reveal them to you, Amen. that you can obtain any freedom or a healing that you need so that you can, as we always say, that you can become all that he created you to be, right? That's what mm -hmm. our, our message is, is that he came to set us free, Galatians 5.1. So it is for freedom Christ set us free. And we want you to obtain all that healing and all that freedom. Why? So you can be who he created you to be, right? There's perfect peace in when you're being who he created you to be. And then once you know who you are, because we're human beings first, mm -hmm. then we can do what he's created us to do effectively and without power, mm -hmm. and with power. I was going to say without power, with power. <laughs> <laughs> As always, if you need someone to talk to or minister to you, we're available. Our sessions, uh, our first session is always free. Um, you can send us an email at realliferevised uh, uh, at gmail.com. I'm used to giving out the website. So the email is realliferevised at gmail.com. And in the subject line, I would put something like stronghold or uh, foothold or something of that nature. So we kind of have an idea of what, what session that you have, uh, you're responding to. Right. And be sure to check out our upcoming events on our website, realliferevised.com forward slash events. And we're going to see you next time on Lunch and Learn. God Bye. Bless God bless.